Hello? What's up, man? I have no idea what the fuck has been going on. <laughs> but I think I've worked a way around it. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. What's up? Yeah. What's up, man? Everyone can hear each other, yeah? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Fuck is that about? <laughs> I guess you can't, uh, you can't uh, talk in the, uh, the uh, green room or whatever you want to call it beforehand. Yeah, um, yeah. Smile time's changed a little bit since the last time I used it. Probably should have had a, a run through. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little one. Yeah. See, this was the issue because I'd planned the whole way I was going to go be live and then I did a run through with it and it was like I was going like that and that, that was it when it was wired. So it was like, yeah, fuck that. I'll try something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's that's the weirdest place to that show. I should probably do introductions. So if anyone else is actually watching this, I better actually check that it's playing live on your Facebook, I suppose. Oh, it's on Facebook? I think so. Nice. That'd Fing be cool. Let me check that. Fingers crossed. It should <laughs> be. How's my audio? Your audio is good, Anthony. It's better than the last time when we all sounded demonic on the playback. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> that was epic. I'm glad it happened. <laughs> There's nothing like hearing Kwame as a demonic voice. <laughs> 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 of all people, it happened to him. I wish I could have heard that. <laughs> cool, dude. Thanks for having us, man. We really, I really appreciate it, dude. Yeah, it's Welcome. my pleasure. Well, once it got going... It seems to be working now. I don't actually know if it's playing on to Facebook the way it's supposed to. It's supposed to just go live to Facebook. Uh, Is it on just... your profile or our profiles? Or how does that work? It should be on mine, and then I was just going to copy it uh, over onto yours. But I don't actually see it. I see a link. Um, my feet this... ruin it. Okay. It's got the link. Okay. No yeah. Problem. Yet I have no idea what's going on. Well, fuck it. We'll just uh, do it this way, and I'll try and work that out for the next one. Just gonna see oh. if I can share it to Facebook real quick. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know what's going on. It's like you, when you go live, it says. Do you want to share this to Facebook? I clicked yes, and all that happened was a link, which yeah. is always fun. Yeah, this is why I don't do tech stuff. I know that like the whole Be Live thing allows you to broadcast to Facebook, and I thought Smile Time did too. But yeah. this is behaving more like Blab used to, where you had to leave the app, or, like you had to leave Facebook to get to the actual conversation. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because the last time I used it, oh, someone's commented on a post. Last time I used it, it was just it went straight to um, Facebook. Not, yeah, it just went straight to Facebook because it's where everyone saw me puke in the bin. That's right beside <laughs> me right now. Yeah, that's true. Because because it was Facebook that pulled the video because oh, it got God. so many complaints. Yeah. yeah, Drew Pugh live Drew on the Drew. air. <laughs> How did I miss this? Yeah, it's, uh, drinking an entire bottle of whiskey is not a good idea when you're doing a live stream. You haven't been in the Drewniverse long enough, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> so, as I said, like, I think like five minutes ago, I should probably do introduction. So we have Anthony Hayes from Me, Myself and I Radio Podcast and Scott Doucette from Podcast Bay. Uh, two podcasters on me just kind of fucked out and winds it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed any of my episodes go out on a weekly basis with my level of tech skills, I tell you. <laughs> I'm amazed they're still up. I'm amazed that they yeah. last longer than a week on the air. I do get quite a lot of Twitter hate, which is fun. <laughs> Twitter is the place for hate. Yeah. Twitter's where the hate is. My, my favorite tweet I ever received was, uh, you say cunt too much. 
<laughs> so I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> you really do. You really do. There's merit to that one. I'm so good with the accent that it's acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> so I... what's, what's everyone been doing? Oh, Anthony, you go ahead because mine's going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in the middle of moving right now. Uh, as Drew said, yeah, my name is Anthony Hayes for me, myself, and our radio. Uh, Scott and I are the co founders of the Podcast Discovery Center, and that's where we hooked up with Drew and all his madness. But, um, it's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm in a little moving right now, so things are kind of sh- slow on the podcast side for me. Um, kind of had to take some time off because, you know, these things come up with family and events that you can't really foresee. So, um, kind of halted production on the uh, full full production on episodes um, and having guests and stuff like that. So what what was that for? I just miss flipping you off in the podcast Discovery Center. It's been like months. <laughs> it's like everybody's lives like at the same time. It seems like everybody's got something crazy going on. Like Scott, I'm yeah. moving. Scott's getting married. I mean, it's just like they're just it's the wheels are turning. But, you know, at the end of the day. We all find a way. We come back to it, and that's podcasting. That's what it's all about, man. We just figure it out as we go. Yeah, I, I basically just make it up as I'm going along. Sometimes I'm interviewing people, and I completely drift off halfway through when they're talking. Back, and I'm like, "Yep, that sounds about <laughs> right." Is that you're super boring? <laughs> See, that's the thing about you that I love, Drew, is you don't follow any of the cardinal rules, like be present with your guest. <laughs> and you still put on phenomenally entertaining shows. Sometimes I, I have actually gotten up and walked out the room before while they were talking to go get a drink and just come back. <laughs> Nobody seems to notice. <laughs> Oh, Anthony, wait until the episode of Podcast Bay featuring Drew releases when I actually launch season two, man, you're going to laugh. There are things said on that show that this guy has done on the air to his guests that you are just going to eat up and love. It's hilarious. Uh, Yeah, definitely. It's it's rare if a guest comes back more than once. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is good it. for me because I can never remember what I've asked them anyway. So it would just be asking them the same shit twice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's none of this trying to lie and hide behind these standards of podcast guruism with Drew. He's just like, I don't know shit. I show up and I do yeah. it. I make it up. <laughs> it works. Go on. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. So yeah, um, with me, things have been kind of interesting. Um, Like Anthony had mentioned, getting married. Really excited for that. Some poor woman is going to be stuck with me for the rest of her life. (laughs) And uh, she seems pretty happy about it. So clearly she's mental. But uh, (laughs) um, but no, I've been getting ready to launch season two of Podcast Bay. Took a little longer than I would like. But now I'm in the hunting down sponsors phase, which shouldn't take too long or be too difficult. Um, I'm happy that I know my audience well enough to know what to tell sponsors when they ask me about them. So that's kind of nice. And I've just been building a membership community that is kind of like the PDC, but a little more focused in on like goal setting, monthly accountability, um, like sponsorship monitor, like really deep focused stuff where I can kind of, cause the PDC is so big that it's hard to focus down on the individual members. Yeah. So I wanted to start like a much smaller mastermind group. So that kicked off this month and uh, people just got their shit in the mail, I think a couple days ago and they're really happy about it. So I'm glad for that. And then other than that, man, just producing for clients like a beast it takes up every single day that's what i've been doing is just kind of making money helping clients produce good shows so that's been what i've been up to and trying to have a life somehow in between there i don't even know what it looks like anymore but people tell me that life is good so i'm just gonna take their word for it and (laughs) But I figure I'm young. I might as well make my money and, and help people and learn as much as I can because, you know, yeah. 
turning 30 next year. So, <laughs> yeah, man, that's, that's something people forget. Like when you get older, it's like, just cause you're not in school anymore, just cause you're not um, at your job, you don't have specific training for your career. Mm. You, you can't stop learning when you get older, man. In fact, I think you have to learn more when you get older, you should read more. Uh, cause we're just, we're not stimulated enough. You know, you should do, uh, creative things like what we're doing right now, you know, all these, these checks and balances, learning these skills and stuff like that. It just, it just gives us the edge on other, let's say millennials or people our age coming into their 30 something. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, man, it's, it's so true. And it's, it's a difficult and it's rewarding at the same time. Cause when you finally, um, figure it all out, you put all the pieces together. Um, it's a, uh, it's very gratifying. At the very least, you can just puke in more trash bins. Or you... <laughs> <laughs> what it unfortunately offends people, even when you don't mean to. Oh my Which god. Is, that is your affliction. A lot. Yeah. Offense is your affliction, Drew. That you are doomed to offend everybody for the rest of your life. <laughs> I've, would... I've not I've had a guest hang up on after I said hello for a while. So I'm doing quite well. You know, I, I have made the mistake of going, all right, my cunt, and then they just hang up. Apparently that doesn't travel beyond Scotland as a way to say hello to people. Uh, I, th- I heard it goes as far as England, but as it gets there, it becomes more and more harsh and mean sounding. <laughs> and then by the time it gets overseas, it's just literally what you never say to your mother, never say to your wife, and probably never say at all. But when you guys say it, it sounds so like endearing and friendly. Yeah. When when Canadians say it, no one takes us seriously, and when Americans say it, it just sounds mean. Yeah, I can't pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to have the whole "you don't actually care what people think of you" aspect yeah. to be you able do. to say it. You do, you do. I think I said it like ten times last night alone. And I was just like, yeah, okay, that, that word has, one, lost all meaning, but two, lost all potency. I need a worse word. <laughs> like, <laughs> are there worse words? Uh, I don't know, man. That's up there, like, top three. I know. That's, like, I, I want to say that's, like, the top most offensive word. Yeah. But in, Hello. I have to watch. Uh, I have a three-year-old. So she repeats. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> like, God damn. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I can't wait for kids for that reason. Yeah. For me, the most offensive word is when I'm abroad and people ask if I'm English. That's offensive. Oh, snap. I could see that. I yeah. could see that. So do you ever have guests ask like, you to repeat shit like crazy because they can't understand you? I had a guest on who I had to repeat every single question about five times which made the editing fun but um, it was a mixture of the fact that I think he's about 90 and deaf (laughs) and it was a bad connection on the phone to begin with so a nightmare but it was um, the film director Ron Howard's dad who was like this famous character guy right and I thought, this is going to be a great interview. People are going to love this. And then it's like five minutes in, I've asked him the same question. <laughs> like, repeatedly. <laughs> and I, I, he went from being, like, really polite to just going, what? What? And it was like, oh, <laughs> fuck this. So I started, I started seeing how much I could slip in. It would be funny if I, if I edited it into the show. Um, so there's, like, bits where I'm like, you're a daft old fuck, aren't you? <laughs> and he was like, what? <laughs> I don't have part keep it in the episode. Which I'm thankful for because Ron mm. Howard actually used the link. So I thought <laughs> if he heard it and I'd slagged him off, that, that would have cost me quite a lot of listeners, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the listeners you have have come to expect this kind of stuff from you. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> What I like is uh, I put a Twitter poll out asking the people that listen to my show how they would describe it. And like most common word was cluster, I liked. But beyond that, it was like vaguely to do with horror, and then you swear a lot. 
that was the set the consensus on it. <laughs> you talk a little bit about horror, and then we don't understand you for a while. Terrified. <laughs> I remember my first time coming across the Scottish accent, like out in the world. I worked at a, um, like a, um, a clothing store, but it was for like, um, like blue collar working, you know, um, like sold work boots and coveralls and overalls and all that stuff. And, uh, I remember this Scottish guy came in and he would just, he was trying to get a pair of boots and mm. like, I'm pretty good with accents. I can understand accents, but he was asking for a mirror. So he could see these boots on his feet. And I had no fucking idea what this yeah. man was asking me for. Because, like, I can't even say it the way he said it. But just when he said mirror, I just blinked at him for a while. And then he asked again. And I was like, I don't know what you're saying. And then he went on, like, a string of insults. Um, and then told me, like, three times, like, I'm looking for a mirror. And I was like, oh, a mirror. And he's like, now you got it, you daft cunt. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> he went to my boss after and said that I gave him the best customer service he's received like in years. But it was just hilarious because I was like, I don't know what you're trying to say to me. <laughs> so I can just imagine your guests sometimes, man. The conversations you guys must get into and the shit you must throw at each other must be a blast. That, that happened to me one time I was at work and I was helping this elderly gentleman who he had a stroke. <laughs> I had no idea what he was asking me. He was like, and I felt so bad. So I pawned him off on another employee. So, <laughs> Oh, he didn't have a stroke, man. He was Scottish. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't old. He was about 16. That's about as old as we get. <laughs> you don't live beyond 60. No. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. no script, no pre-prepared questions. This was yep. a daring move. Yeah, especially when I'm like, I was like, yep, yeah, no script, nothing pre-planned. I'll do it for 12 weeks straight. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Day yeah, one is the one, worst that could happen. Week <laughs> one, everything goes to shit. Listeners, <laughs> 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 zero. <laughs> Well, it's kind of hard to get listeners when shit's not posting where it's supposed to, huh? Yeah. I shared, I well, shared Twitter a second ago. I don't know if it went through, but... Yeah, it's one of those. It's either going to post right at the very end, or... You know what, go... though? This is a real look. Like, when I want to give podcasters a real look, it's stuff like this mm. that they need to understand. Because when I'm teaching new podcasters, first of all, they come to me so fucking misinformed that it drives me insane. Like, if I see one more seven steps to a successful podcast, I'm going to fucking shoot someone or myself. Um, because you, you can't have seven steps to a successful anything if you don't know what success means to the individual person. Like, we all podcast for different reasons. Like, I do it for the money and the chicks. And, you know, so like a successful podcast for me looks different than it does for someone else. Yeah. And like, so when podcasters come to me, I have to tell them like, there, you're going to post shows and literally get crickets, dead air, guests who hate you, um, tech difficulties. Like it's going to take time for you to iron out all those kinks. And I swear to God, like that needs to be there because it, um, Weeds out the weak. <laughs> the people who are not supposed to be doing this get fed up fast and give up. And it's great. <laughs> yeah, that's what I always find amusing is people are like, well, you do it for a long time. You get successful at it. It means every time you do it, you're going to be out the gate with X amount of listeners. I, w I went from a show with 8,000 downloads a week to a show with 17 downloads a week. <laughs> I'm worried about that. I'm worried about that. Full disclosure, like, I don't know if you guys remember the podcast Bay Launch, but that thing was off the fucking hook. Like, two weeks, 2,500 listeners straight out the gate. Brand new show. Everything was great. I'm going to launch season two, and it's been so long in between the two seasons, no one's yeah. going to give a fuck. 
No one's going to give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm starting with two really offensive episodes. So, like, sponsors are going to drop off, episodes are yeah. going to get pulled, and no one's going to care about the show. <laughs> I'm excited. Yes. Sponsors was... One of the things that kind of pissed me off about my last show was they were like, we'll come on to your show because you do good numbers, but you have to cut all the cursing out. You've got to cut all this. All like, if I cut the cursing out, my episodes will be about three minutes long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fuck <laughs> it. Who's listening to that? <laughs> Fuck it. That's going to be I, I, my criteria for um, actually sponsoring a show, I'm going to be like, do you swear? And if they're like, no, I'm going to be like, oh, fuck, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I string some episodes to make them a bit longer. I just swear a bit more in the middle. <clears throat> Seems to work. You get an interview that maybe went eight minutes and I can string out a 20-minute episode out of that. Anthony, like... what pisses you off in the podcast industry? Let's just turn it <laughs> into a <laughs> podcast <laughs> episode. Oh. <laughs> Um, Mine are gurus, which is hilarious because I am one. Mm, I just don't yeah. use that term. I fucking hate them. <laughs> They're assholes, aren't they? Yeah, I would definitely. Uh, it, it probably goes back to what you were saying: the seven steps to the best podcast, and all the posts from all these people suddenly they're coming out of the woodworks, like, "Oh, I'm, I've got this uh, this podcast book," or "I, I um." I launched a book. Uh, my book is on Amazon all about podcasting. And like three weeks ago, I've never heard your name. And I was, I'm in all the podcast communities. I'm like, um, and I'm supposed to believe you. Yeah. Right. Like uh, I'm, I'm tempted to write a seven steps to the best podcast, like a seven steps to a million listeners, you know, and just put it out there. And the first step is going to be stop fucking reading these. <laughs> like stop buying into these like programs that don't they're not specific enough for you yeah like what's drew what's your objective with your show what do you care about uh well i could give you the five episodes i'm pressing people off the truth is i started my show as a way to deal with having social anxiety disorder it forced me to interact with people I wouldn't usually interact with and push and now, my boundaries. And, yeah. now, and now you're cussing, cussing out A-list actors. Yeah. Because <laughs> what you find is they're all arseholes. <laughs> yeah. Anthony, man, why'd you start your show? Like, Or not even why'd you start your show, but what is important to you when you get out the gate? Like, when you turn on the mic, what? why are you doing it? Why do you care to do it? What success look like to you? I could definitely relate to Drew, and I know, Scott, we've talked about... <clears throat> is that putting yourself out there, that anxiety that you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to come out of your mouth. Are you going to be in the zone? Are you not going to be in the zone? Um, and for me, really, it's, it's about overcoming myself in a way because, you know, we don't really have this face-to-face, -face, like we're not a face-to-face -face society. You know, so to be able to communicate with people, like-minded people, other podcasters, authors, uh, coaches, whatever you want to categorize yourself in, to be able to, you know, have this community around you to support you and lift you up, uh, it gives me strength, you know, because I know in, in my immediate community, meaning like where I live, I don't have friends. I don't really consort with anybody. I don't hang out with people at work because I don't have any intellectual conversations with them they're all just like hey, hey bro um <laughs> i'm just like what, what are you what are you saying right now <laughs> like words over two syllables uh, and it just it really just to be able to kind of elevate myself and it's almost like a little secret world because a lot of people don't even know that i do this right so i'll just be sitting in my closet and i'll turn on the mic and and start recording an episode or coming up with notes or blogging or something like that and i think for me it's in the grand scheme of things it's a you know, unloading of my emotions in a creative creative manner and if people dig it that's great and if if they don't it's it's therapy for me not for you so at the end of the day if you get something out of it uh more power to you because that means we're on the same wavelength i love it man and for me it was basically like 
you know, I had been doing radio and music and recording and all that as a kid. And I knew I wanted to start a business doing something. So I started doing public speaking and motivational speaking and stuff like that. And when someone approached me to start a podcast, I was like, oh, that's just a bunch of overweight guys reviewing movies, man. I don't want to do that. Like, that's that sounds so boring to me and so amateur. And then they showed me this whole like list of podcasts that actually had like a purpose to accomplish. And I was like, fuck, OK, yeah, I want to do that. Like, I'll review movies later, <laughs> you know, like what, once I'm once I'm a has been, I'll start like, you know, talking to A-list actors. No, I'm kidding. Drew. Yeah, trust me, there's no less those for it. <laughs> but no, like, and so what ended up happening was I got involved and I just kind of did a, a show for millennials, much for the same reason you guys did, right? Yeah. Um, give a kid from a small town in Canada a global voice and see what he does with it. So I was like reaching out to cast members of The Walking Dead and like the Blue Man group and like famous YouTubers and just anyone I could find that didn't have a traditional job. Yeah. And I started realizing how many people suck at what we do mm. and how many people trust all of these schemes and schemers to help them get like numbers. They don't even know why the fuck they want numbers mm. to help them get into new and noteworthy. They don't know what it is, how to get into it or why to help them like just to like chase all these frivolous and actually like meaningless things. And I was like, no, like, I'm going to be the anti-podcast guru. I'm just going to go pop as many balloons as I can and then educate people. <laughs> and it ended up that there, you know, there's quite a, a following for an honest podcaster these days. So I, it just grew from there. And now my, my objective is literally to, one, make money because that's important to me. You know, I want to be able to sustain myself with this business. But two is just to teach as many podcasters as possible how to do what they do better than they currently do it. And on what I've, the one thing I've learned is that there's no cut and paste formula. Like it's subjective for all of us because we all want something different out of it. There's, there's so many different options for hosting, microphones, websites, and not, nothing is a one fit all. Uh, for each individual person. That's something that I realized really early on because um, I'm pretty transparent on my show too. Uh, like when I actually started getting into a rhythm and having a introductory song and an outro and actually kind of put the pieces together in a somewhat professional manner, I thought to myself, all my shit ass episodes that I recorded on my phone that I was just talking nonsense didn't really have a point. I was talking to myself in my kitchen. And now here I am. I'm actually interviewing people, uh, you know, heroes of mine, authors and, um, you know, UFC fighters, things like that. I thought to myself, you know, this whole element of the show is, is kind of about discovering yourself and, you know, kind of trying to see like what, what you're going to become. So I thought it would be kind of stupid for me to go back and delete all those past episodes because I really thought about it. I was like, you know, I was pretty transparent about the whole way. I told my audience, hey, I'm learning this podcasting thing. It's pretty cool. If you like it, you want to listen, let's talk. Um, hopefully I, I can inspire you because I'm just trying to inspire myself. Maybe you'll take something out of it. You know, from there, I was able to publish my book. Everything that I, I said on the podcast, it slowly came into fruition. So it's like this whole journey I documented, it's, it's right there and it's, it's out there for people to consume. So if they want to start at the beginning, and I always, I always tell people, I'm like, hey, if you're just tuning in, um, you know, check out the first episode, check out one in the middle and check out the very last one. You're going to see an evolution. And that's kind of like what my, my whole show is about. And, you know, if, if one person could understand that, which I've had messages on occasion, uh, too. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> hey, good show. Um, if one one or two people can kind of relate to that on their journey of self discovery, whether it's being a podcast or uh, just being an individual, being your best self, then I feel like um, you know I've done some good in the world because there's so much shit around us. There's so much hate. There's so much bigotry. There's so much anxiety and fear 
that um you know if if i could be one small voice of positivity in the world then uh i think that's pretty cool that is a noble cause because you're with two two of the neg- most negative people i've ever met <laughs> Yeah, I have ended interviews by saying, well, you're a born cunt. Bye. <laughs> Sometimes I forget the cameras are on and I'm like sitting going, when we're talking, and then I see my phone and I'm like, yeah, that wasn't very professional. <laughs> you're like sitting there picking your nose. <laughs> <laughs> like looking around. Putting the headset down and walking away. <laughs> Yeah, that's usually why I don't keep my cameras on because like, I live in South Florida and it's 90 fucking degrees here every single day and I never have clothes on. So I was going like, to say, you're naked more often than you're not, man. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, really, like, I don't... <laughs> I go commando every single day to try to get the airflow going down there. Um, and Drew, if you're not familiar with that term because you are Scottish, uh, you, don't, you don't wear undergarments. Yep. <laughs> airflow through there. And it just, it's just survival, man. So, like, when I'm on the... Uh, when I'm doing a show or something like that, uh, I'm likely podcasting in my underwear or, or something very, you know, like some nice little boxer briefs or a, a, a little mankini, if you will. <laughs> but I'm comfortable. That's all that matters. Oh, man, that, that just brings a whole new light to the interview we did a few years ago. <laughs> if you were wearing a mankini during that episode, I don't want to know. <laughs> explains why he's always sitting in the closet. <laughs> All of his clothes are there. He's not wearing yeah. any of them. They're, they hang up around me. I use them as a sound. <laughs> not in my closet now. I mean, the closet's a reason, but I, that's my closet, and my all my clothes are literally right here on the sides of my screen. <laughs> Actually, good sound insula- insulation. <laughs> I'm put. I'm putting that in my next in my next uh, do it yourself course. My next seven steps. Seven steps to a soundproof room. It works, man. It works. There's, <laughs> you know, there's little things that I think of because every environment's different. No, no, but not everybody has a studio and state-of-the-art microphone. So I kind of figured out, like, how can I take a twenty-dollar microphone and make it sound better? Because hmm. I was only willing to invest a certain amount to kind of get this started. Because I don't know where it's, I still don't know where it's going. I'll be completely honest, I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. But <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's. <laughs> come to me they ask me questions about podcasting and i i give them the best information i can i hope it's correct um but i i don't i don't know i I don't know i kind of make it up as i go along a lot of the times and i hope i steer people to right i just with a bullshit just why are you coming to me for advice if you heard my show i just i don't like what would you do and i do is I went and invest all that money in amazing audio equipment that quite a few people on the PC are always going you should buy this site, you should get this up. fuck that, spend some money and get a personality <laughs> go to acting classes or something <laughs> today that's what people are listening to personalities, oh yes. they don't want to listen to some boring fuck um, talk nice yes. really, nice, nice. really big actually it's yes, that's a good point because I'll be honest, like when I went and listened to how to podcast podcasts, because when I was getting into this niche, I had to study like my competition and see just who yeah. else is out there. Right. And it was the most buttoned up, semi pro, boring motherfuckers I've ever seen. I felt like the coolest kid in a room full of pen salesmen. Yeah. And they treated me like I was so cool. And I was like, guys, like loosen up like you don't need to be so stiff so professional so censored so careful because like if you do that you're gonna sound like every other person who's being that stiff so i just started cussing started opening up the invitation for people to trash talk our industry which the podcast industry for some reason everyone is don't get me wrong everyone is lovely everyone's really supportive like as a general rule, it is a very helpful, positive community. But they keep all of the trash talk swept under the rug and they keep all of the hate swept under the rug when really there are things about this industry that fucking suck. Can I one? 
Can we talk about one right now? Yeah. Other podcasting groups. <laughs> or fucking shit. Okay. After after you've just admitted that you know nothing about podcasting, I don't think you're allowed to say this. I mean, you guys want to give away stuff? We started that shit, baby. It's right here on my wrist. <laughs> See, now it's gotten to the point where we actually do stuff behind the scenes and then launch it afterwards and do stuff kind of sporadically because people like literally are biting our shit. And it, as charming as it is, it's kind of annoying and goofy because... um, <laughs> What? I said, thank you, because, like, I remember going on this whole big imitation is supposed to be the nicest form of flattery or, like, you know, whatever. And I just, I hate it. When people imitate me, I, I just, I want to climb the fucking walls. Be <laughs> original, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, I think it would be a little different if there was, you know, just one way of doing things. Then it would kind of, everybody would blend together. But when we step so far outside the box that it's blatantly obvious that other people are seeing what we're doing and they like it and they're trying to sell it to their community, it's like, you guys are trash. We don't far find- too many communities no, that yes. are literally like 300 no. fucking podcast gurus and like 300 newbies that are buying into their bullshit. And that's, that's a- and they're pitching. And, they're pitching like crazy, and people are and just. I am it. banned from most of them because when I joined them, and I'm looking, and people are like, "I can make your show better than it is," and I'm like, "So could anyone." <laughs> it's like episode one of the show where I had a conversation with a guy who's like a big pop star in the UK, but no harm to him. Personality. Every answer was like yes, no. Maybe. And I only had 19 questions written down, so it was short as fuck. It was like six minutes. Then it was like, bye then. Episode one! <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, cause I had no skill at the time. And then there's people going, I can make your show better if you pay me $500 a week. And I'm like, uh, why would I pay you $500 a week? I tell you that. Well, that's because you're getting fuck all. Wait a minute. I'm a, there are- that's... There are people charging five hundred dollars a week for what I do. I gotta up my prices. Yeah, yeah there are a lot of them. <laughs> what What's quite funny is Work. I can't remember what the website's called that named and shamed a whole bunch of podcast gurus by showing you their actual download numbers for their show. Nice. They were using their feed hit and counting that as their download numbers. Yeah, so it was elevated. I'm like. That's one thing that I always laugh about because it's like, yeah, currently I've got like, was it 80,000 feet hits on my show? I ain't got 80,000 downloads. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. There's all kinds of tricks people use. And like the funny part is, is they don't even understand why they want mm-hmm. large download numbers. They don't get how the numbers even remotely translate to anything and the truth is unless you have an engaged following that you're talking to and building those numbers mean dick yeah. how many times have you seen people twitter bomb and blow their show up through the roof in three days using automated posts you learned the trick here guys <laughs> but like the numbers mean nothing nothing yeah. are you talking about me <laughs> i think we're talking about repco <laughs> I, I was waiting for his name to come up I was waiting for his name to come up. No, he doesn't. I don't think he Twitter bombs. I don't think I've ever seen that. But uh, I know a lot of people who do. And it's like, at what point is promotion not doing its job? You know, like, Mm -hmm. why are you even promoting becomes the question. Because if you don't have an active listenership and you're not building relationships, for whatever reason, you're literally just pumping numbers for the sake of having numbers. Like, you might as well not even be doing your show. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and that's what gurus don't tell you. Your bill is yeah. in the mail, guys. <laughs> like, fuck those guys. Fuck those guys. They make me laugh, though. If nothing else, they do make me laugh a lot. Because just the amount of... I've, I've never understood the amount of BS people are willing to listen to until it comes from someone who is like six months deeper into podcasting than you are. Yeah, like, I think that's why people... Um, 
gravitate towards us so much, uh, Scott, because we're, we're so humble with the process that we're willing to share any information we do have. And <laughs> yeah. humble yourself, Dick. I'm not humble about anything. <laughs> Continue. Yeah, the, uh, the accolades that we get at the Discovery Center are just the testimonials and everything. Just man, it, it baffles me. Like I'm just like, whoa. And I like I don't even know what to say half the time, man. I know. Just um, I, one one thing stuck out. It was a message that uh, somebody posted on the wall. They said that they were googling something, could not find the answer on Google, came to the podcast Discovery Center, and found a fucking answer. I love it. That I love it. It is heavy. Truth be told, with the accolades and the testimonials, I honestly, truly believe in my heart of hearts that those are actually all for you, Anthony. (laughs) And uh, the other part that I really like about that group um, is, like we said, there's not a whole lot of, like, peddling of wares going on, even though, like, full disclosure, guys, I would love nothing more than to sink my marketing teeth into that group. And just like sell to all 1400 plus people and be like, I can make your shows this shit one on one individually. I'd love it. It'd be great. It'd be a gold mine. However, that is not why the group was built. And so when people spam their services or their shows in there, it drives me insane because if anyone should be allowed to do that, it's me. And so I'm like, if I can't do it, like, fuck, I'm gonna let you do it. Yeah. And I get in there and I start like banning people. And then Anthony has to tell me to calm the fuck down. My book sales are down. So if I, if I can, if I can get you to go ahead, I'll, I'll start selling books in the group too. So. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so like I was in the millennial entrepreneur group and Drew's going to love this. And I was in the millennial entrepreneur group the other day and Arnie Giski, are you guys familiar with Arnie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love him to death. Like I have a man crush on Arnie. If he's watching this, I love you, bro. Um, But he's the bromeo to my Juliet. Um, But uh, one of the things that he did was he said that if you spam in this group, in the millennial entrepreneur community, we are going to go to your business page. Every last one of us, and there's 10,000 people in that group and give you a one star review. And I was like, fuck. Like, I'm going to take that, adopt it, call it the Arnie effect, and start doing that to every bastard who spams the podcast Discovery Center with their show. Because we're not that kind of group. So I was thinking, like, if you spam your show, I'm just going to invite all 1,400 people to one-star review your show on iTunes. (laughs) Just to be an ass. And I know Drew would jump on that shit. So I've got at least one supporter. Bloody (laughs) occasion one star reviewed some podcasts people go i want an honest review but they don't really want an honest review <laughs> I'll give you an honest review <laughs> said it to me and they seem very entertaining when they're writing in the group and stuff and i listened to the podcast and it's oh, it was it's not nice to say but it was shit is you know they're like very monotone voice and Everything's slightly off, so like the intro music is loud as fuck, and then they're really quiet. And then the music that separates all the different sections is loud as fuck again. <laughs> and everything's just like fucking out of sync and weird. And he's got background music that's louder than him when he's talking. And so I was like, I thought my show was a clusterfuck, and then I heard this one. <laughs> Wait, are we talking about my show again? <laughs> Me, uh, myself, and I is. Uh... <laughs> I, I signed off with Love Drew. <laughs> when season two of Podcast Bay comes out, Drew, I want an honest review. <laughs> and I'm screen capping that shit and sending it out, so make it as vulgar as you can. <laughs> That's going to go out like this is what people love about my show. And it's going to be like one star. You suck. You're a guru. <laughs> <laughs> Instances, not not recently, but there has been instances where I have listened to shows. Um, not recently, I'm not not even within the past year, um, where I've listened to shows with the intention of leaving a review. I I just couldn't do, it. I couldn't do it, and I I'm not like one to critique um, others and look down not look down on others, but belittle others' ways or whatever you <laughs> creative process, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, I just, I couldn't come to, to do it because I 
would want to I would have wanted to be honest and I just I just couldn't see myself like blasting somebody for all to see so I just instead of leaving a review I just didn't leave one because I'd rather leave uh, you, know, you know what I mean yeah you're one of those if you don't have anything nice to say types oh great show or you know at the very what you should have done was just uh, like a couple of dots <laughs> just leave the rest blank <laughs> all I can say about this show is dot 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 <laughs> I'm like, you do realize your movies are all shit. That's why you're coming on my show. You make shitty horror films that no one. So I interview you because that's funny. It's like I I came this close to getting you ball on my show. I don't know if you're familiar with you balls. Amazing work. It's usually films that are based on video games and they're all shit. He's like the worst filmmaker of all time. So he, uh, he's, all he wanted was me to review his latest movie on uh, Amazon. So I watched the trailer of it, I couldn't watch anymore, and reviewed it saying, based on the trailer, this could be you ball's finest work. And by finest, I mean shittiest. And then just went on a tirade about how he's de- destroyed that as a subgenre of horror. And everything. then I went... He's probably not going to come on my podcast now. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't. Again, I'll, I'll put this out there. I think in our last little email discussions, he said he wanted to fight me because of you. I'm open for that. If you pay him, I'm happy to fight him. <laughs> he's like a 50-something-year-old man who thinks... Oh, so this I'm- is two people... In the, the time that we have had together, two very short discussions we have had together that you have tried to fight or someone has tried to fight you. Yeah. So, like, I honestly think we can come up with a new show. Just getting you <laughs> fighting <laughs> actors and producers and directors. I think that should be a new show. Yeah, five grand. I'll fight someone. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I love it. No, man. Honestly, it... My, I, I found a loophole because a lot like Anthony, I don't like putting people down for the sake of putting people down. But the loophole is that like people now, for whatever reason, they know me, they like me, they trust me. So they call me and they're like, Scott, man, I, I want you to listen to my show. Tell me what you think. What could I do better? And I'm like, you sure? And they're like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay. And, you know, in some cases, this is like I do this for like paying clients. So they're paying me to poke holes in and otherwise like drag their shows through shit. And I get to speak my actual mind. Like your intro is too long. What the fuck is with the leveling on this sound? Amazeballs. When have, who says amazeballs? Stop saying that shit. I never want to hear that fucking word come out of your mouth again. Like, and meanwhile, they're like, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Taking notes. It's fantastic. It's the best thing. Just become a consultant that, and bash people. Amazeballs is so fucking 2002. Yeah, holy shit balls, which is what I hate for my show. <laughs> I start every show with it. I always started the first episode with it because I didn't actually remember what was... And I randomly blurted it out while trying to think what I was going to say. Forgetting that I can re-record. <laughs> <laughs> because it's not live. And I just blurted out, holy shit balls. And then every week I just say it. You can actually get it on a t-shirt from a wee store I've got going, which is quite good. It's in emoji form. Oh, one of the shows that I produce is called The Inner Dominatrix. And at one point, the, <laughs> the host said she was a lazy dominatrix. And I called her immediately and told her I wanted that on a t-shirt. Just lazy <laughs> dominatrix right across the t-shirt. I was like, that shit is merchandise. Like, y- the things you say on your show can become your merch. Like... <laughs> Lazy Dominatrix would be the best t-shirt and it would have come straight from her mouth, man. Like, some of the shows that come out right now are hilarious too, like some of the subject matter. But some of them are just getting bad for the sake of, like, being yeah. bad. Like, there's some shows, I remember Kwame got in touch with Anthony and I one day just because, like, he had literally listened to the most racially offensive show he has ever heard in his life. And he went on like a three mile rant in our messenger inbox. And like, I couldn't even bring myself to listen to 15 minutes of the show. It was that 
bad, both quality and content. It was horrible. And I'm just like, this, these shows are the reasons why podcasting won't legitimize. Which is both good and bad, because the second it legitimizes, everyone with big money is going to run away with this industry and, you know, the art form of it's going to be lost. But at the same time, when you do have hobbyists and purists putting out shit like that, it looks bad on everybody. Of course, you're discluded, Drew, because your stuff is tastefully awful. Yeah, mine's is just Scottish. (laughs) That's just how we talk. But yeah, um, I've heard, I've actually heard a show... Uh, the guy, it's called the John Wilkins Show, and it's basically a complete ripoff of a show. Down to he uses the same intro music, <laughs> and he has edited it the same way. If you remember, I, at the start of it, said this is you're listening to the Drew Carson Show, then it played intro music, which was an Eastern European punk rock band. Yeah. Rocking, <laughs> but it cuts off just before the guy starts singing because you can't make it a wobby scene. And then he's done the exact same way of doing it. No, that's yeah, awesome. And, and he interviews, he interviews so it's like people that have been on reality shows and stuff. So it's the type of people I used to say no to, you kind of interviews. But it's like, I don't know if I should be offended. Or impress someone thought that show was good enough to rip off. Well, man, you're saying that, but the second I lost pot or launched Podcast Bay, I had three other people trying to launch that exact show with the ex- almost the exact name. They just changed the name of Bay to something else, and they were trying to take the exact same premise and the exact same like. And I remember going on rants about it because that shit drives me crazy. Like, come up with your own stuff, whatever. But the nice part is, like, most of these people who are doing that, they don't have enough originality to keep shit going. So they fizzle out very quickly. And I'm very grateful for that. Like, unoriginal people typically don't last unless they find more people to rip off. So I love being the guy that everyone's ripping off versus the one that is doing the ripping. (laughs) <laughs> I'd like I'd like to go on his show. I think it'd be a fun episode if I just went on and called him on his bullshit. But you should see, it. I would like someone to come on my show and call me on my bullshit because that's fun for the listeners and controversy. I'll do helps it. With download numbers. Yeah, exactly. I will come on your show and call you out for whatever you want. You can give me an actual <laughs> script to use to call you out if you like. <laughs> it's, it's, but I remember when I just joined the PDC. And I was trying to find Anthony's show on iTunes, and there was three shows with the same name, <laughs> and two of them were about About this six episodes um, younger than Anthony. So it's like, actually, I was one of those. I was skimming through the names of the people in the PDC, see if any of them were the ones doing it. So I thought that would be funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some tough goes as far as. Uh, SEO is concerned because uh, me, myself, and I has been the title of many songs, one of which yeah. was by Beyonce, I think. So uh, I'm dealing with multi million dollar platinum selling recording artists. You can't compete with Beyonce, dude. I know. And so when that song was really hot, like my my show dropped out of the the rankings on <laughs> Google. Like I, I was searching for something. I'm like, oh, me, myself, and I, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who the hell is this? I'm not that good looking. And, and <laughs> I was about to say you're a better singer, but you're nowhere near as good looking. Yeah, right. So uh, that I do have to say there has been a little, uh, difficulties with that there, but good good thing that they kind of dissipate after a while. You know, once that sh- that song kind of uh, fizzles out or whatever, and I, I can pop back up. The one motherfucker. That I- <laughs> Hey, listen, this is theory. The one motherfucker I cannot get the first rank spot from, his name is Anthony Hayes. Yes. He goes for a living, the son of a bitch. And it's his real name, right? Please tell me his real name's Anthony Hayes. It's not a pseudonym like yours. Expert. That's what he does. I can't get him out of the top, uh, the top spot on Google. <laughs> I've written blog posts, guest blog for people. The guy is a he's a he's a maniac. I, I just I'm 
I'm coming for you, fucker. <laughs> I'm gonna start. We should all start writing articles as Anthony Hayes, like as you, just to get you higher up on the ranking. He can't beat the three of us. It, nobody has my real name. <laughs> First. But yeah, like one of the things I do want to bring up too about the PDC is part of the reason I really love this group is because we have sh- we've we've kept an air of respect, but we have shed the need for professionalism. So guys yeah. like Drew can come in and be himself, and he might offend some people, but he won't get kicked out unless he spams. <laughs> I don't spam because I'm not that tech savvy to be able to work out how you put links in. <laughs> That's good. Like I'm... Person to be in a group. <laughs> you better not spam or I'm going to go give your show an honest review. You mean you don't have a There's quite a few honest reviews of my show. I quite like them. Oh my God, somebody's actually here. Oh, yeah. Alex K, thank you. I put pomade oh, in my man. hair just for you, man. <laughs> I know we actually have a view. <laughs> Why are you watching this? <laughs> how, how, did, how did you find it? <laughs> And can you share the link? Because <laughs> <laughs> if you can, there's a good chance this show's disappearing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy motherfuckers popping in. Oh, man. But yeah, no, like, I love the fact that the group is so laid back that people can get in, yeah. they can cuss, they can share their opinions because, like, the co-founder of the group does podcasting for a living and everyone in that group slams people who sell podcasters shit. And I'm one of those guys. And so it's fun for me to be able to get into that group and see everybody speak their piece about gurus, about shit show quality, about spammers, about people who take themselves too seriously, people who don't take themselves seriously enough, Mac versus PC. Like everyone's in some kind of fucking fight somewhere. And yet, yeah. nobody hates one another yet, except yeah. Ripka. Fuck that guy. Fucking <laughs> He's going to love that because his name's been mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, though, I fucking love that guy. I really yeah, do. I give him a hard time. I mean, we had a, I had a rough go with him early on. and I know. I know. That was the one time I had to play good cop ever. I, Ever. We talked about it on his show, actually, and it was just funny to, to sit back and be able to talk about it. And every now and again, he, he posts some stuff, and I want to, I want to push his buttons. Uh, just, I just, I just can't. I just don't do it anymore. It's just I kind of <laughs> watch everybody else try to get with them. I'm just like, oh, don't do it. <laughs> no, don't fuck with him. Don't do it. He will literally come to your house and pop yeah. you in the fucking kneecap. Don't. <laughs> yeah. I like him. You, you don't want to. You don't want to pick on a podcaster that has a lot of guns in their house, and he right. probably has a lot of guns in his house. He's and if not a lot of guns in his house, experience using them at least. Like the man knows his shit. Yeah. But what I love is that like he'll come in and he'll drop like, and like Anthony said early on, he was one of the biggest abusers of the group. <laughs> uh, no, he'll admit it. He'll admit it. He got in and he was like, "Oh yeah, man, I'm just gonna jack off on all of these podcasters." Just. Spam, 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 spam. He spammed us all. Like, he got into a fight with a socially awkward kid. He, like, (laughs) he quit the group twice after, like, these massive, like, raging blowouts. Like, he was by far the most (laughs) colorful and abusive member of that group ever. And I remember at one point he left and I was like, stop leaving the group, man. Like, you're not allowed to leave anymore. We like you. We value you. The whole reason you blew up on that kid is because he broke rules, so you're, like, a bulldog for us. Like, where the fuck are you going? And, like, since then, he's been just such a solid contributor and, like, helping people and really, like, getting to the guts of what he wants to do. And I'm pumped for him because, like, man, that is what I love about the group is it, like, it grows people. And, like, people come in not fucking knowing what the hell's going on and they leave knowing their shit. And that's what I like. Less than me. I just leave not knowing anything. <laughs> you can't even work smile time. You should have called Ripka. <laughs> oh, he did a smile. He was on that smile time when I puked in the bin. <laughs> and thinking back, I think he helped me get that to work. <laughs> <laughs> I know he turned it off from me. He ended well, the episodes for me because I was in no condition to do anything. 
Well, I mean, when um, it comes to live streaming, he's the dude. <laughs> Well, I'm glad nobody's puking tonight. That's oh, good. Um, nah. Yeah, I don't drink on camera anymore. <laughs> I have. I literally have like a two beverage maximum now because I'm either a lover or a fighter when I'm drunk, and there's no way to tell which I'm going to be. Yeah, man. I, I don't even know. So yeah, I don't. I, I don't drink anymore. Um, I've gone through phases where like I would drink for like a week. And we don't go out like that over the years, and unfortunately, because I take a lot of medications, um, it just it doesn't sit well. Yeah. So I just, for me personally, it's it's one of those things. And not to mention, I don't like the social acceptance. This is gonna sound weird. I don't like how it's so socially acceptable to drink. It's like, hey, what are you doing after work? Let's go grab a beer. Do we have to grab a beer? Can we get coffee? We- <laughs> okay. Man shop for shoes i don't know it's just- i i went to an old scottish man's house when i was on vacation in niagara falls okay i went to niagara falls and i spent a week at this guy's house because you know he's my uh my fiance's grandfather that guy like dinner was over and he had a scotch in my hand immediately every night like right after dinner, here's a scotch. And we didn't stop. Like it wasn't a lot of alcohol, but he made sure there was scotch in my hand. And we would only go to bed at like one, two in the morning. So like it was, it's in, for some people, it's not even that socially acceptable. For some people, it is like. Necessary. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's necessary. It's life, right? Like it's literally ingra- that ingrained into their habit, like their habits. And I grew up a heavy drinker, man. Like. I lived up to the Canadian drinking legend where we could drink anybody except the Scots, but we could drink damn near anybody under the table. And then I just hit this moment where I'm like, yeah, but I don't like who I am when I'm drinking. And on an episode of podcast Bay, I was shit faced and it was with Arnie Arnie. and Arnie was sober, like by a couple of months at the time. And I didn't know. And I'm like, you better have a whiskey in your hand, man. And he's like, I don't drink anymore. And I'm like, you're kind of a bummer. <laughs> and that's what I realized. It might be time to stop giving people a hard time. I'm like way too nice when I'm drunk. You're it's probably like, such a teddy bear, man. You're probably like a cuddly, lovable duck. I, I become like Canadian when I'm drunk. <laughs> I had a guy, well, I had a, there was a guy um, uh, trying to mug this lassie in Glasgow. All I saw was he was shaking her. So I was drunk and I went over and I was like, you probably don't want to do that to bug me. And I grabbed his shoulder and he turned around and he slashed my arm with a knife. And my natural reaction was to, well, my natural reaction was to almost hug him. Like, what are you doing that for? That's stupid. And then I got a little bit clearer headed and did stuff that I won't see on camera. (laughs) But yeah, my natural reaction was, that's not very nice. Let's hug it out. So that like, that is very Canadian. That's yeah. very Canadian. He like I once a buddy of mine um got me a switchblade as a gift one year and I no longer have it unfortunately. But he just it was very ornate. He gave it to me. It was beautiful. And I was like, "Man, I really want to go out on the street and mug somebody like right this minute." Like I don't even care and like I'm just going to run out and be like, "Give me all your fucking money. Give me your money. Your wallet, your keys, your shoes, like everything." And then once they gave it to me, give them the switchblade and go, okay, okay, now you mug me. (laughs) See, I think it's safer for the world when I'm drunk. Because sober, I would probably be in jail. Right now, (laughs) if if he'd slashed my heart so far. So if you're if you're nicer, if you're nicer when you're plastered, man, you should probably start recording plastered always, because then your guests won't walk off your show. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking it might be a good port. Rec- I'm supposed to be doing. Like, this is the funny part. I'm supposed to be doing these types of live shows with celebrities. Someone said you should do your old show, bring it back as a live stream, and capitalize on the YouTube audience. And I was thinking. No, but <laughs> I need some content for you, channel. So why not? But since he's been going, I'm starting to think I probably should drink for it. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I have an excuse for when tech issues come up. 
Anthony, you were in the wrong room to bash social acceptability of alcohol, man. <laughs> and my, my mom is an alcoholic. My grandfather, it just it just runs in the family. It's one of those things I have to be aware of. My family too, man. Alcoholics straight through. Yeah. A ton of them, a ton of them. And that's why I set myself a limit and I'm a lot nicer to my body now as well. Because I have lost too many days to the hangover. Too many. So it's, it's- it's strictly a 12 pint minimum, the maximum even, then. Just 12. <laughs> Just 12. <laughs> Just 12. I, I was at a wedding ceremony at the weekend in Wales, and we were, we'd were we walked from this plate up to like a, uh, what they called the point, which was on uh, overlooking cliffs at the sea to do photos. And we walked back, and I was in the group that walked back first, and I had about two Proseccos, I'm just uh, (laughs) yeah probably should just lay off the booze a little bit till everyone arrives and I haven't drank it all (laughs) yeah man I've seen like my old man I've seen that guy drink 36 beer and like Mm. I've seen him drink himself sober he gets to the point where he can't get any drunker and he keeps pounding him back. And next thing you know, he's watching the sun come up with his hand on his hip, like leaning on a stick. And then he goes and whips up, like fires up the barbecue and starts like barbecue and burgers at 5 a.m. And then by the time you get up at like six to go talk to him, he's literally dead sober and didn't go to sleep at all that yeah. whole night. And I don't know how that man does it. Like, I don't know how any of you guys do it because like I am a lightweight in terms of like the people that I know and I still pound them back better than a lot of people, you know, that I know. But when I see guys like you got, you're legendary to me. And I, I don't know if I'm, I'm like reverent. Like, I don't know if I revere you and aspire to be you or if I'm no, scared or disgusted. I can't tell. <laughs> it's not a good thing. That's a whole triple X. In Canada, we can't get that in the U.S. Can you send me some? Is that- <laughs> Should we not be talking about that? <laughs> yeah, we probably shouldn't be so loud about that. And, uh, <laughs> Join the Podcast Bay community and get a monthly mail out. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Scottish comedian has a joke about the town I grew up in. He says he was driving through it one night. And he saw a guy leaning against the front door of a house, peeing all over it. And he then took out his keys and went inside. <laughs> and that sums up Scottish people when they drink. And we're the same way. I don't know. I've, I've known way too many Canadians, man, to pee, like, on their own houses. Like, my, my fiancé finds it weird, but, I, like, I love to pee outdoors. Like, my folks live in the country, and the second I get there, that's the first thing I do is I go find some place behind a tree and just take a leak. And she's like, that's the weirdest thing. And I'm like, I like the way it feels. Like, this is the freest I get to be. Leave me be. <laughs> hey, we've all done it. We've all done it. And anybody is, who haven't is a liar. Anybody who hasn't pissed outdoors is missing out. Like, let me put it that way. And if you haven't puked on a bin live on the air, you are also not living. <laughs> and that if you a, if you haven't a, had a pensioner threaten to fight you. <laughs> I have so many people threatening to fight me. I did a podcast episode with Dan the B7 where he just ripped into Ken Shamrock because they were supposed to be having this fight and Ken Shamrock tested positive for steroids. Um, and it was like when they're both in their 50s and he tests positive for steroids, <laughs> ripped into him. So I thought it'd be fun to share the link to Ken Shamrock on Twitter because I thought I'll get him to come on and do a rebuttal. And then he started having a fucking go at me. <laughs> he caught me a piece of shit for having Dan Seven on. Dan Seven was a friend of mine, but he caught, my piece, he caught me a piece of shit for having him on my show and all this. So I thought, this is brilliant because, again, controversy. It helps with ratings. It so does. I just started tweeting them back going, well, fuck you, you old prick. What are you going to do about it? Why don't you come to Scotland? <laughs> and there's like all these Scottish people going, they'll fuck you up. <laughs> you have a reputation. Yeah. Not well earned, but yeah. <laughs> oh, man. 
That's the thing. Like, I, I, that's three people now that I could, we could line this up and have you fight Ken Shamrock. We can have you fight Face from the A Team. We could have you fight yeah. <laughs> just about everybody. But save, save, save the yeah. save the A Team thing for the release of Podcast Bay. Don't yeah. tell that story. No. No. <laughs> I want I want people to hear it from my show first. <laughs> I'm allowed to be selfish. Yeah. Yeah. What you guys got on the uh, horizon? What's 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 coming up for you guys? Anything anything exciting? I've, I mean, we already touched on the uh, the impending um, wedding coming up. What like a week and a half, two weeks? On the ninth. On the ninth, I'm getting married on the ninth. Yeah, awesome, That's awesome. Huh? That poor woman. She's got no idea what she's in for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she sure doesn't. When I show up. The- ceremony or the reception with my speech if you like i love it when you we're in the sing. same dress <laughs> we're in the same dress as my woman singing beyonce's me myself and i <laughs> and then kicking the speech off with my fellow canadians <laughs> I, I swear to god dude if i could afford a plane ticket i would unannounced show up we wouldn't let you in. We're not even letting my dad in. Like, we're not letting my family in to this. Like, oh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a very low-key thing. But if you showed up, I, if you – I'm coming from – where are you at now, Virginia? Um, no, almost. I'm going to be there in a couple of days. We're, okay, we're, so – And everything like that. But So coming from Virginia, if you were to show up at my wedding unannounced, I would probably, like, have to let you in at that point, wouldn't I? Mm-hmm. If so, Drew showed up, I would just fight him, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. live. How, how tall live, are you, Drew? We'd live stream it, but someone else would have to walk the live stream just to make sure it works. Uh, I'm six foot six. And you weigh in at what? About two hundred and eighty pounds. And you have fight experience, do you not? Yeah, quite a bit. Are you a good runner? Good runner. Well, I'm six foot six to eighty pounds. And 80 pounds. Thank you. <laughs> so, you, so you're not you're not really that strong of a runner then. No, I don't run. No. Okay, I'll fight that's with you any day. To, That's why I have to fight. <laughs> I'll, I'll fucking, I'll, if you can't run, I'll fight with you any day, man. <laughs> You'd never catch me. You'd never catch me. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, for me, what's coming up is I've got the wedding. I'm really excited for that. Some poor woman is going to get the absolute worst of me because, like, I've never had one that was stuck with me before. So this is going to be really cool. I can't wait to test the boundaries on that relationship. Uh, (laughs) And then basically just looking to spend this summer. I've got a vacation coming up in August, but producing shows and growing my um, membership community because – I'm really, really excited for it. Like, I've been sending out, like, um, these postcards with literal missions written on the back specific to these people's shows. Like, I'll go and look through their Facebook and I'll see that they're not posting enough. And I'll write, like, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is, you know, post 20 times on Facebook this month. Mm -hmm. And so it's all very specific and it's accountable and it's direction. So I'm excited to see just if I can kind of help people with their shows this year like legit on a one-to-one level without killing myself in the process so that's kind of what's up for me is is just kind of travel a little more take more time off and then use my time on a lot smarter um cool well you come out uh... who's next and you can go next (laughs) Awkward fucking silence. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all your fault. Worst thing you can say to a socially awkward person. <laughs> Watch me have a seizure. See, that's funny for anyone that knows me because I used to have seizures anytime I was anxious. Oh like I, I had like 20 a day at one point. Oh, so, yeah. I, I shake, I I shake when I'm anxious. I do. If I get to a point, I shake and I collapse. Yeah, I now have to go, like, when I'm mega anxious, I have to go through this whole mind garden thing, where it's like, you go into your safe place and all this. My safe place is like a cinema that's playing weird-ass movies. 
a six foot six, 280 pound man's safe space in his mind must be quite a thing to see. People are getting stabbed in it, which is quite nice. <laughs> so yeah, Anthony, what do you have going on, man? Um, yeah, I, I just, I mean, we're moving for a work opportunity. You know, we have a three-year-old. We're going to have to be there a minimum of two years in Virginia. We just visited there last week. It's so beautiful. I can't see us not, not just taking everything out of this experience and, um, you know, just kind of rolling with that. And, uh, you know, ma mainly everything I'm going to be geared towards this year is my career and trying to see how I can advance that. And, you know, as soon as I get up there, I don't know how much space I'm going to have, but I'm definitely going to get my somewhat of a little cubby or a closet or a little nook uh, and try to get my you know microphone plugged up as soon as possible because I have so many people that I want to talk to and I've got messages from a lot of people that actually want to come on my show and I don't know why. Um, it's because it's not Drew's show. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why. But, um, no, they're all good people, man. So um, just that's why. <laughs> <laughs> We're too good to go on Drew's show. He'll call his nasty one. We we're, we want to go on Beyonce's show. Just, I don't know. So the single ladies that are calling him. <laughs> That's the only Beyonce song I know. So that was the only reference I could come up with. <laughs> Dude, but oh man, this is going to be the big thing for me this year. I, I don't know if I could outdo last year. I got engaged. I, I published my book. I don't, like, I want to outdo you know, last year, but it's giving me really hard. So I'm gonna have to come up with something big, but, um, which is only a matter of time before I, I do that. Cause I'm very impulsive that way. But, um, you know, and with regards to the group and stuff like that, we got some stuff coming up down the line. We're, we're going to do, we're actually going to give like away a microphone and a, uh, uh, like a, um, I probably have it around here somewhere. It's in a box, but, um, it just, you know, it's not, a three hundred dollar microphone or something like that, but it's a we're gonna come up with a unique gift, and I can tell you right now, even if the other podcast groups hear this right now, I guarantee you, you guys won't be, do this because you just don't, you just don't have it like that. <laughs> our, our our group that much that that we're willing to do stuff like this to to make sure everybody gets the right start and you know they have the right tools, the essentials. Um, aside from the wristbands and getting those out to you guys, um, you know, we're just, we're just doing it big. We're trying to come up with new creative ways to build the community, build ourselves and, uh, you know, just kind of see where we can take this whole podcasting thing. And, um, yeah, so be on the lookout for that, obviously giveaways, prize packs, all that shit. And, um, the microphone thing, that's going to be huge, but Scott and I have to really hash out the details cause that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. I didn't even know what was happening. So we <laughs> Guys. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah uh yeah so actually i got it i actually have it in my possession now so that's definitely going to come um that's that, that'll be coming up it's a a mic with a windscreen um i think it i it might even have a tripod or a, a boom or something i don't even know i I, didn't, I have to open the box but um yeah, so that'll be awesome, and and that'll be something great for you guys to look forward to in the group. It'd be funny if there was no mic in the box. Like whoever receives it just gets this box full of like packing styrofoam uh, macaroni type things, like packing noodles, and underneath is an is love from the PDC. Ha ha ha, Beyonce, <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Hayes, SEO expert. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I guess that I can add to 2017. I'm looking for a way to take down that guy. <laughs> what my year looks like. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Guest blog everywhere you can. I am. No, destroy I am. Anthony Hayes. You know what? And, and something like I don't, I haven't, because it's kind of new. And I, I've actually, I don't even think I've talked about it in the, the group at all with anybody. I actually started blogging for Project Semicolon, which nice. is a, you actually, you're probably familiar with that too. Um, is for mental health awareness, suicide prevention. Um, they just launched their new website and stuff like that. So I'm actually, I was actually invited. It's kind of a, a, a bad way to go out with the conversation, but it's also inspiring at the same time. The founder of the, the group actually took her own life about two months ago. Um, so it's both sad and it's both 
uh, sad and exciting because I'm going to be able to take on, you know, to kind of bring her message and to keep going with it and to kind of just um, embody everything that she, um, not just me, obviously everybody else too, but um, to be able to just embody her, her spirit, if you will. And uh, to kind of, you know, just uh, shed a positive light on a not so positive topic that people don't really want to get into, but um, yeah, man. True. Drew, you have to follow that up. No pressure or nothing. No. Um, well, I've got episode two of this coming next week. <laughs> hopefully the same time, but fuck to be on. Uh, the Drew Carson show is next month. Hopefully all the bugs are worked out by then. Uh, the first episode of that was actually scheduled to be Chris Cornell from Audio Slave and Soundgarden, but obviously died recently, which I left a big gap in the music and the band in my first episode coming back. <laughs> <Where's it funny? laughs> I don't know why I laughed. That was a nervous laugh, honestly. <laughs> I was wondering. I'm like, I'm like, why is this guy cracking up about that? That's horrible. Chris Cornell yeah. died and now I gotta go find a new guest. I gotta uh-huh. go find some fucking celebrity. <laughs> That is really bad, especially after uh, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I've got that show coming. Uh, my goal for a fun podcast at the end of the year is to, I don't know, for, get a couple of thousand downloads <laughs> before now in Christmas. Fuck it. That's about the goal. It's like, I know I'm not going to talk last year podcasting wise. Like, Last year, I got to 380-something thousand downloads from my show when it wrapped up. Nice. So I'm not going to get touch on that. I'm going to make this year what I was making on a episode of last year's show. It was slightly more PC. Uh, I kind of got around the iTunes algorithm thing by never saying it was a mature show even though I swore on every episode. And I think it was because I just didn't know to actually put it to mature, which helped. So this one's like, there's a lot of countries that my new show yeah. isn't available in, like yeah. India and uh, China. And China was my big one of my big markets for my last podcast. India as well. Yeah. India as well. If, if your show is explicit, you will not get played in quite a few countries. So point to note for anyone watching this for value. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't be a naughty podcaster. Or you can uh, join the ranks of us who are and just say fuck those countries. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> You're not going to get a sponsor for their anyway, so fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I pride myself on the fact that a, a alcohol company turned me down because they said my show was too raunchy. What? Fun. People drink your product and then beat their wives. The my show's too fucking raunchy. <laughs> Try on. <laughs> See, this is this is kind of the why I've not got a sponsor. <laughs> I probably should have a different kind of sponsor issues, but <laughs> just man, go back, go back to the old fashioned way. Go back to the old fashioned yeah. way. Podcasts used to do it. Adult entertainment. When podcasting started, that's who sponsored this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you could get that. That is raunchier than you. It must be. Yeah, must be. It's got to be, you know. <laughs> Anthony's, you eyes, they Anthony's eyes are like this bigger. <laughs> I, I, I made a really dirty comment I was going to say, but it wasn't in <laughs> to follow up. So I was going to say they're dirty. Yeah, they stick, they stick things in their cunt. <laughs> Of course they're dirtier. Uh, man, I, I can honestly say, though, that I've never listened to Drew's show and then had the urge to beat my wife, so screw that company that turned you down, man. Mm. But, yeah. I, yeah, I a, don't know if I, I can start for everyone that listens to my show in general. I know a lot of show are articles because I've interacted with them on social media. So I know first hand. <laughs> oh man, I love it though. No, it's good that there's so much going on and that we've got yeah. some stuff to shoot for, some stuff to try. Like, 
I'm excited to see where we're at this time next year. Honestly, I'll probably be recently divorced. Uh... <laughs> no, it's overrated. What divorce? Yeah. <laughs> no, there's there's no way out of this. There's no way out of this. Once you marry me, you're you're stuck with me forever. So I hope she understands that. <laughs> I like that. The past year. Drew, are you married? Yes. How is it? For me or for my wife? <laughs> for, for, for me, it's great. <laughs> That's the answer I was looking for. That's her heart. Oh, she, she must be a wonderful woman. <laughs> she would need to be. I fear that I will fall into a deep sleep one night and she'll suffocate me with a pillow. <laughs> Oh, yeah, <laughs> and then and then Anthony and I, Anthony can blog about it and, and take, and take down right Anthony top. Hayes and take down Anthony Hayes. <laughs> that will be how we do it. So she takes the pillow, she puts it over my face, and then I have no choice but to wake up because I can't breathe. Yeah. See, the other side of it too is that like I I've never had that fear to go to bed, but I hear that comes with marriage. Like eventually, you actually fear sleeping next to that woman some nights, just just in case. Because of the types yeah. of days you have. When your girlfriend and boyfriend or, or fiancés, there isn't this um, I've got to kill him type of modality that happens when you're married. When you're married, like my mom has plotted my stepdad's death I don't know how many times. And like, I'm like, do all married couples do this? And she's like, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I remember growing up, my dad always went to bed about an hour and a half after mom. He will wait for a go to sleep. <laughs> Like keys to a happy marriage. Yeah, go to bed late. Go, go to bed late and have two sitting rooms. She's on her front seat. Go and buy my mum and dad. <laughs> and now we know what happened to Drew, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the only thing that's going for me right now is I don't think my wife ever listens to my podcast or oh. watches anything like this, so I'm fine. <laughs> my... My fiance literally has told me these exact words. Podcasting is stupid. I don't know why people pay you. Yeah. Tell me that is not hard on a person when they make their entire profession about this. And then they marry a girl who's like, that shit is dumb. (laughs) (laughs) That's how I knew she was the one though. Cause I don't, I don't want to marry my biggest fan. Like, fuck that. I want someone who can actually tell me that I'm ridiculous. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't have wanted to marry my biggest fan my biggest fan's a guy called Kate <laughs> on Twitter who retweets about a hundred times a day links to my show I want to say it's awesome that you do that because this will probably if this actually works this will go on Twitter and everything so yeah Kenny keep doing it but yeah I wouldn't have wanted <laughs> to marry him because he looks like a fucking nut job <laughs> well no harm to him, but he's got like one eyebrow that exists in the middle, if not at the size. Guy's fucking weird looking. It's brilliant. Oh, mine try to do that. My my eyebrows are always trying to hang out in the middle of my face. I got to shave yeah. that shit. Yeah, that, that he shaves everything else. That's the only part I shave. It's my <laughs> eyebrow. Clearly. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I do have to get going. I've got some time to spend with my lady before she. Um, before I go to sleep before her tonight. So I really appreciate you having me on the show and uh, a fun first episode, I must say. If nothing else, it was a blast. <laughs> and that pillow to the bed when you go to sleep. Right. Tape, <laughs> duct tape my pillows to the bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been great hanging with you guys. And we'll say bye to Alex if he's still watching. <laughs> We had someone watch this. How I was gonna, say, I, was gonna say, I hope the guy's not still watching. Like that poor man. I hope he can read this. Because <laughs> if he didn't, I, I don't think this is actually going to work. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those. If it doesn't appear on your timeline, sort of where you get video, because it only goes a beta recording. So it's ah. only once it, the a beta that you get it. So if the video didn't go live to Facebook anywhere, I think it's fucked.
<laughs> well, it's quite fun. Yeah, it was fun. What I'll say is I'll probably rip it off of Facebook because that's probably legal, probably, and <clears throat> put some credits on both ends and whack up on YouTube. So that should work. But if it didn't turn up, it was great talking to you. <laughs> Don't blow the thing up. We're getting electric. All right. Cheers, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah.